Hey, welcome to another Get Geekish podcast. Uh, I'm Bino. Uh, thanks for joining us once again this week. And to my, uh, would be my right, this, this way, there we go. Uh, it's a face you may not have seen before. It's Sarah Paul. She's actually a, a local friend of ours, known her for a while. She's been in the cosplay world. And then she has her very own children's book in the works. So we thought we'd bring her on the podcast this week to talk a little about this because it involves superheroes and dinosaurs. Enough said, right? So uh, <laughs> go ahead and introduce yourself, Miss Sarah, and let everybody know who you are. Oh yeah, my name is Sarah Paul, and I, I wrote a children's book a long, long time ago, and now it's going to be published. See, that, that's that's big news. Like, especially <laughs> in the re- the recent months of things, when people ask what's new, you're like, well, I I went to the grocery store last week. It was kind of a big deal. You have a, a book being published. Um, so this book is I wish I were a superhero, and kind of tell us the story of where this came from because you you said this has been a a long time or a long process to make this happen. And there's, there's gotta be some passion going into this. There's been a lot of time and a lot of work that's gone into it. Yeah. I actually wrote it on a whim. I would say 10 years ago, at least um, I had the idea for it. And I thought about a, a little kid. I didn't think about a dinosaur at the time, but now it's a dinosaur. I think it's um, a little, a little kid that wants to be a superhero, but can't decide which one to be because there's so many good kinds to be and that's a similar problem that I have which one would I want to be if I fell in a vat of chemicals what would I hope to come out as (laughs) Um, the best plinko board ever which one's it gonna be (laughs) (laughs) um and then you know sort of the moral being as long as you work hard anything is possible I feel like a lot of kids superheroes books now like this is this might be getting a high horse uh especially in comics they seem to have missed that point comics from when we were growing up that seemed like there was always the lesson in and you look at 80s cartoons and even if it was a cheesy psa at the end there always had to be some sort of lesson there and so i feel like when people can make these stories when it's teaching kids something it's great i have an eight-year-old daughter so that lesson for her of just keep trying and work hard that's something i can say a thousand times but it doesn't matter but when a cartoon character in a book tells it to her then suddenly it's gospel so i'm i'm excited about that (laughs) Exactly, right? <laughs> I love those PSAs. <laughs> well, joke. Captain Planet said so, so I better do it. Yeah, yeah I, I, I still to this day cut up my little uh, uh, plastic rings on soda bottles because of him. Yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> Save the little turtles. Oh my God. Now, uh, for your book, you said you originally hadn't thought about being a dinosaur, but what, what made you switch to the dinosaur idea? Uh, the... Uh, the first illustrator that I talked to is actually a friend of mine. She did not wind up illustrating books, unfortunately. She just time commitment. Um, but she said, you know, what if it wasn't a person? What if it was an animal? And I was like, that's genius. <laughs> you know, like reached inside my brain and figured out what it should be. So uh, very, I'll put a thank you or something to Liz. And I was like, Thanks for telling me not to have to be a person. <laughs> it's it's like, like the great muse, right? Yes. <laughs> She understood immediately. And speaking of illustrations, you said you'd go through numerous ones, but the illustrations you have shared that are coming from the book on the, the Indiegogo page, which if you want to see about it, we have a link down to the blog to the Indiegogo funding this thing. This is some of the artwork from the book right now, which is absolutely stunning artwork. So well played. And who, can you tell us a little about the, who the, the, the illustrator is? Uh, her name is Tara Elling. And forgive me if I've said it wrong. Tara, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, and I, She wound up being the fifth illustrator that I spoke to, and I was in sort of a frustrated, I'm just going to Google search children's illustrator and see what comes up. And she had some work on Etsy, and she had done these cute little crocodiles sitting in a circle around a campfire. And I was like, that's who I want, because they're like very hyper-realistic, but they're cartoony. And they're adorable. <laughs> so I, I messaged her and I said, I wrote a children's book. Do you want to illustrate it? And she was like, sure. It's this much per page. Great. Here's some money. <laughs> it was like the easiest. Everything else had been so complicated. And it was just like, sure. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> on, on that kind of note, because I, I know a lot of people, especially some of the listeners I've talked to, uh, publishing a book a lot of people don't know what goes into it can you give us a little peek into what kind of work has to go into publishing a book because it's not like you just hey i typed a couple words i'm gonna go kinko's print one out and publish yay like what's some of the process that goes into that 
there was a lot of research on my part. Sorry, my dog came in. <laughs> uh, so I spoke with a, a friend of mine, Megan Scott Mullen, who's a published author, and she kind of connected with me with a friend of hers who did children's literature. And it was a lot of like, okay, well, I'm going to submit my book to some publishers, but I don't have an agent. And frankly, I kind of want the art to be a certain way. So I looked into self-publishing and there's a lot of companies out there that provide self-publishing services. So it was just about finding the one that was going to work with me, get the finished products that I wanted in the correct way, and then also support me in ways like copyright and selling my book for me on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and having a tangible copy because there are some companies that are, you know, like a Kindle only. Mm. And I was like, I want the thing in my hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I get torn. I still love the feeling of the, the paper book in my hand, yeah. but I love I, I, I having them both. I love having my iPad or Kindle that's full of stuff. Maybe I look through anything. I want to be able to download every book I've got and read in the, in the, in the airport waiting room. Well, not that I've been to an airport in a long time, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I see both sides of that argument and then I'm, I, I, I just want both. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think because I wrote it, that's the only reason I was like, I needed it. <laughs> with kids' books, too. Yes, kids use iPads and tablets all that time, and they're way better than any of us were when we were young using them. But there's still something about like going to the school library and come back with right. that stack of books to read, and you have them under your bed with the flashlight under the blanket and stuff like that. That's where magic happens. <laughs> yes. I, with the scholastic book fair, you had your little, like, $20. What am I getting? Yeah. <laughs> As kids, we never knew how good those things were. I was like, yeah, we get books all the time, no big deal. As an adult, you're like, this is a really good deal. These are better than Amazon prices. Buy a whole lot. <laughs> like, I'm ordering them some too. We, our, our poor daughter, we, uh, one of the book fairs, I think two years ago or last year, uh, we found a bunch of stuff we wanted to. <laughs> so we had a book and we had to come pick it up because when the order came in, we got like the illustrated Harry Potter books and stuff with it. So she had like a 22 pound box of books and they were supposed to just give it to her for a backpack of the way home. Like, Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll come to the school and pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make her carry all of that in the backpack? <laughs> My daughter's got scoliosis now, but I got me some Harry Potter books. We're good. Worth it, worth it, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have you learned anything that you would give as advice if somebody else is uh, trying to get into the publishing world, or something that would save them a lot of hassle, or some some advice you'd have for somebody like that? Oh, I wish I did. I feel like I would have that. I might have better advice for that after the book is actually. <laughs> we're we're going to put with that as to be determined right now. <laughs> to, to be, you know, I guess make sure that the publishing house is legitimate they're not going to steal your work because that was the first question i asked i was like well if i publish through you if i self-publish with you do i still retain the rights to my work yes you do. Great. <laughs> you're not going to scam me right, <laughs> right. I, I i must be like on edge or something right now because i'm like is there a scam is it a, is it a... <laughs> Yeah, people are getting good at their scam artists. It's, it's good to be on your tippy toes about that. Yeah, and I, it's personal, I think, because my mom has problems in that arena, so I'm always hopefully cautious now. Yeah, my, my, my parents fell for the go buy some activation cards from Target to the tune of like 10 grand, so <clears throat> yeah, rough, rough times. <laughs> That's a whole different topic, though. Back to kids' books. <laughs> anyway, children. <laughs> Um, like I said, we'll, we'll put links uh, in the podcast and the blog to all this stuff. If anybody wants to go check out your work and wants to support it, they will have direct links to this. You know, Dinosaur, How to Be a Superhero, Good Lesson for Kids, uh, coming to countertops near you. Uh, now, if this works out, do you have plans of uh, future books or a series with this character or something down in the future if you can pan this out? Series would be cool. I actually had a, another idea for a book uh, based on my aunt and uncle's late dog unfortunately who was a little scotty dog and mm. she was so cute and i i thought about a little scotty dog that is going to go on adventures in scotland and do very scottish things and you know play bagpipes and this nasty. so i was like i hope this works out because i want to i want to finish that book too <laughs> that could be fun i mean you with your background in entertainment like I, one of my favorite stories about you that we'll have to just toot your own horn a little bit with your, your cosplay side with Serafina cosplay. 
uh, some of our really good friends, uh, they had their first convention almost two or three years ago at Denver. And they had their daughter at the time that was four or five years old. And we split up and did our thing and our thing. And they came back and this little girl is my daughter's friend, just beaming. And they told the story about they met this most perfect Wonder Woman. They took pictures of their daughter, was making love for it. And they whipped out the picture. I'm like, I know her. I know her. <laughs> but to this day, uh, they, they still bring up of that was the, the, one of the most best interactions they'd ever had with anybody. And their daughter was just in love because she was at that convention. And she met this amazing Wonder Woman. And she was so nice. And, and it was, uh, and that was the, 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 whenever we saw you at conventions, you were as ones when you took a character, you didn't just dress up and be like, yeah, take pictures. You kind of, jumped on and like played the part of the character and actually jumped on board of like, ah, I'm Wonder Woman. I'm going to be Wonder Woman. Like, <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. I really do love that story. Yeah. I, I just love it. I, I used to So I think it, it, it stems from that because if a little kid is going to come talk to me, I better know who I am and I better talk about, you know, <laughs> have, have a good conversation. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a whole different world of the cons. Like when you get the people that are there like trying to win costume competitions versus the people that are there just trying to have fun versus the people that are famous. It's, there's definitely some audiences to play to the right, the right tune on that. Yeah, yeah. So interactions like that made me, when I, when I found out you were writing a book, because I had no idea you were a writer at all. I know you'd done some, some stage drama stuff. And... I don't even, now that's weird. I don't know that I even would consider myself a writer. I just... It kind of came out of my brain and went on to the computer screen and um, and then it was suddenly done. Like I wrote the thing so quickly because it was just sort of a, a snowball. Oh, well, he, he can fly or he or she because it's not really, it's a dinosaur. So whatever. Um, Jurassic Park Dottis, it doesn't need to be either. It can be both. <laughs> right? There's some frog DNA in there. <laughs> So, but, and then, yeah, so maybe I am. There you go. You've, you've got a book that's almost published. That, uh, that counts as being a book. I'm a writer. That's great. <laughs> you're, you're as much an artist as I am a professional podcaster. We'll go with that right now, right? Okay? You totally are a professional podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the other things that I, I, I feel like we uh, mesh on a certain level is that behind you, you have lots of your, uh, your uh, action figures and toys and <laughs> collectibles and whatnot you you were definitely a big she-ra fan is that is she one of your favorites yeah uh the the classic 80s show uh which is funny because that i think that makes people think i'm older than i am but i got it as like a hand-me-down from my sister and then we would go to blockbuster and rent they had vhs tapes with the <laughs> Renting car just, cartoons just, from Blockbuster. We we talked about this the podcast a few weeks about the remembering video stores. Oh, TV yeah. shows were the worst at Blockbuster. I remember renting some of the cartoons. Uh, I like, could rent like Transformers and Mask and go down to Blockbuster, pull it home. And there was a time I rented the same tape from Blockbuster for probably eight, ten times before I realized there was more than one episode on the tape. <laughs> Because it'd be like four episodes, you'd watch it and you'd watch it and then go through the whole credits, roll through, and then it'd bleep to black for a few seconds. Like, oh, doing it's over. Push rewind, be done. I was like seven. I didn't know any better, but I'd run out of that tape and all of a sudden it just kept playing. You're like, oh, there's more. <laughs> oh, that's good times. Well, that's how I found she was the blockbuster or whatever it was. It doesn't matter. They're not in business anymore. That's, it still works out. So that's how I'm a Shira, but because I missed the it being like on TV in in real time, I missed all the toys. So now <laughs> the the modern toys are a little bit better than the old ones. I had my fair share of He-Man toys, and they were not the greatest toys ever. They yeah. Well, even Shira came with the you know the toy head version, and I was like, no, I took that off and I put on the cartoon. <laughs> So she looks like the show. I feel like a lot of those uh, toy collectible companies need to just let go of a little thing and be like, you know what? Uh, you guys have certain merchandising rights, but you just need to let some of these people that are artists and designers make your toy look a little cooler. Right. <laughs> There's actually a couple of them where I was like, man, that looks way cooler than I thought it would, you know, out of the box. Mm -hmm. Octavia's got, I don't know. 
particular the ones and she can hold her sword. I guess the step up of some of the, the original ones where it's just the exact same body with a different colored head slapped on top and they paint the legs a different color. Like, oh, look, it's a new character. It's new. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that since then, did you watch the, the toys that made us about He Man? Because I'm pretty sure. I've, I've not seen the He Man one. It's on my, my to watch list, but I'm sure there's probably some gems in there. I'm pretty sure there was a couple where they were like, just throw that different head on it, paint it a different color. Done. Beast Man. With my, my Transformers toys, they geek it like that. And there's some, you can look at some of the blogs of them, and you can literally see the description of some of the certain ones are rehashes, remakes of other characters. They just take one character, put a different head on, put a different color. Oh, okay, it's a different, that's a different toy, whatever. What are you, what, what? That's why He Man rides the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of orange and black, it's green and, and yellow. And they were like, there you go, we already had this, this tiger toy. Done. Good kitty, bad kitty. All right, we're fine, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've, we've kind of tangent it off here. We'll bring it back to, to kids' books one more time before we wrap things up here. Uh, okay. Kids' books in general, since you have one that you've written and is hopefully being published here, what are some of your favorite kids' books, whether it be favorite for yourself or inspiration? I think my favorite, I have like two favorites from when I was a kid. Uh, the Lovable Thrill Grover and the Monster at the end of this book. And I, I don't know if you've ever read it. it I, don't, I don't think I've, I've read the second one. So cute. And, and the whole time, Grover doesn't want you to get to the end of the book because there's a monster at the end of the book. And he would build a brick wall, and my dad would be very dramatic about it and be like, oh, it's so heavy. i got to lift the brick wall and turn the page, you know. And then, it, spoiler alert, at the very end, it turns out that Grover is the monster at the end of the book. And uh, maybe I did read that book. That sounds really familiar now that you lay out the, the plot. But. The plot. It's just, yes. <laughs> Loved it. And then I, I had another one about the Christmas Postman, and I think they still have this one. And, and you could look at the letters that the postman was sending to everybody in every page. So you pull it out and you could actually read the letter and then take it. Nice. I think it's interesting how many uh, you, you look at kids books and how, how many thousands of kids books there are, but every one of us has a handful of ones that are somehow just stick in your brain and you just either you read them a thousand times or something just stuck. And every person you talk, I've, I've never met somebody that has, if you, they list off a handful of kids books, maybe a few that you've read or had, but nobody ever has like the same list of books. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I, I guess we're all affected differently by, by books and probably how our parents read them. Yes, how ex excited they get about it. It's, like I said, when your dad gives us the certain voices and all the dramatic energy into it, pretty sure my, my kid now loves uh, the, the book with no pictures because of that. Yes, it's a, it's a kid's book and there's no pictures in it, but it has these really kind of funny words in the way the story is. So if you just read it with any kind of inflection that it shows in the book, it is absolutely hilarious and it makes them just giggle like no end. And there's absolutely no pictures and it makes you feel good. You're like, yeah, my kid's reading chapter books now, but <laughs> <laughs> like no pictures. Genius. <laughs> I should have figured that out. I'm just kidding. I don't think anybody would have bought my book had he not been so there you go. Those, I, I, yeah, I would say the pictures are going to be a, a good, good plus to that one. Uh, have, you, have, you, have you seen the final version yet? Or are you still waiting for all the pictures? And I've got all the, all the illustrations are done. And then I've done like a layout. Um, and my, my best friend Christy is doing, a, she's going to graphic design that shiz together. <laughs> this, this snizzle. Oh, <laughs> Some kind of family show. We're okay with it. Shizzle's okay with us. <laughs> <laughs> so that they'll all be, you know, they'll fit into the. I think it's going to be eight and a half by eight and a half. I think it's, so. That's why he's, he's nice. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to see this whole process. It's 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 uh. I mean, it's, I, I open when I call you for congratulations because that's awesome that you get this done in there. But uh, hopefully you can reach that goal. And this because, like I said, this is all Indiegogo that you're starting off with. And yeah, if you can get I that mean, goal, then you know, the sky's the limit, right? I mean, start doing yeah. some book tours, write a whole series of books. 
get a cabin in Eastern Europe to spend the summers? <laughs> Excellent. No, I mean, as it, as it stands now, we've raised enough money to where I can fully publish the book and order the initial, I think it's about 100 copies. Um, so it's, it's going to happen. It's going to be published. I'm going to print the copies. I just have a few other expenses that it would be nice to be covered. <laughs> I would like to be a published author and I would also like to make money being a published author. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, it's still easy. That's okay. <laughs> well, they, they, I mean, it's a little bit nervous. I mean, I, again, a lot of people probably don't realize too. There, there's, in, like you said, the investments have gone it. So it's not just a willing, they're like, ah, oh, nothing happens. I'm not out anything. It's how many no, hours of time and how many dollar bills out the window. Like this is, this is a big deal. So it's a little scary. And then so. being like, oh, I, I probably need like a sales tax license, but, you know. Hmm. <laughs> That's tomorrow problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, appreciate you very much taking the time to, uh, to join us this week. Hopefully uh, people got a little bit of uh, a view into what I wish I were a superhero could be, and hopefully might get them excited about it. But if nothing else, you will excited about the, the author there, Sarah Paul. So uh, <clears throat> we'll put the links in that blog and uh, can't wait to see the finished thing when it's done. I just uh, pre-ordered my copy today, so I'll get my own on it. You have to sign it though. <laughs> I paid the extra 10 bucks for that. <laughs> Yay! I honestly, and that wasn't me being vain. That was like I was looking at other children's books, Indiegogo's, and I was like, "Oh, they do a different price for sign." Okay. Yeah, just look, look, it's the it's the little perks. <laughs> we'll be like when you're when you're like J.K. Rowling, ask somebody be like, "See, she signed my book." That's right. What's hey, up? I, the third is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the next Dr. Seuss. No. <laughs> Life is young, right? Yeah. I mean, it's in rhyme, so there you go. There you go. Well, uh, again, thank you so much, and thanks to everybody else for listening. Thanks to Ames Community College for uh, playing the pod pa podcast back every week. We appreciate that. Uh, if you want to find out more about Miss Sarah Paul and – point that way there we go and her upcoming book uh, you can find us online at get geekish we'll have links to all of her stuff so you can find out for yourself uh but if you're looking for i wish i were a superhero coming to a book near you soon thanks so much <laughs>